All right. Hello and welcome back to part two on our series on taboo thoughts. As always, I'm here to or happy to uh, be with Christina Orlovo and uh, and talk about um, taboo thoughts with you guys in October, being that OCD Awareness Week is just right around the corner. And um, and also, you know, just a friendly reminder, you guys that down in the links um, below, we are going to be actually hosting a live workshop here on October 27th. Uh, where we're going to be on live and talking about this stuff way more in depth, but also giving space to really open up to Q&A and to answer your questions and to, you know, give you guidance on this. Um, because if this is something you struggle with, you don't need to do it alone. And we don't want you to do it alone. And so, uh, you know, as part of this month, what we're really excited to do is be doing this this live workshop. So definitely check out the links down below um, and uh, and make sure that you you get over and register because their spots are going to be limited. And we we do expect it to to fill up and sell out um, just with, uh, because it's going to be live. So, um, so Christina, so to really recap last episode or or in the last section, we talked about um, really the different types of intrusive thoughts, right? The different types of taboo thoughts. Mm -hmm. And at the end, we talked about how this really is not the content that you're dealing with problem. And if you treat it like the content problem, you're going to struggle because you're always going to be trying to solve that content, Mm -hmm. whether it's sexuality or harm or bestiality or pedophilia. If you're trying to solve that problem, you're going to run into trouble. Mm -hmm. So we talked about really shifting to understanding this as an OCD problem. And I was hoping that you would really help us understand that wheel and really understand this from an OCD perspective. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, yeah. When, when we're talking about the OCD wheel or the anxiety cycle really with OCD, I mean, that that we're really talking about um, kind of these different components and one feeds into the other. Right. So, you know, it's really kind of, and maybe some folks know this and for some folks, this might be brand new. um, But really what we're talking about is, you know, when you first have an intrusion that, that pops in and we covered in, in our, their first series that, you know, it could be a thought, it could be an image, um, it can also even be a feeling sometimes like just suddenly you, you get this, this big feeling that pops in and like just this stuff feels off and you don't know why, but just something's off. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, when, when that when that comes online, it immediately triggers your anxiety. Um, it triggers your fight and flight response. And yeah. when that gets triggered, then, of course, naturally, you're sitting there and you're you're stressed out. You, you, you know, you're panicky. You can be feeling guilt, shame, embarrassment, anxiety and any of those negative states. And of course, naturally, you're going to want to do something about it. So then you respond behaviorally. You do something, mm-hmm. right? And typically, when you do something in OCD, the thing is, the thing you reach for is the thing that probably would make sense to you logically, because you would imagine this is just something that any person would do. But suddenly, you might find yourself, you know, feeling a little bit better, and then suddenly, well, but before you know it, bam, the intrusion comes in again, and suddenly you get that anxiety again, and then oh my gosh, I, I feel that that off feeling, and I gotta do something. Well, okay, I did that thing last time. Let me go do do more of it. Maybe I need to do more of it, um, and then I can be done with this experience. So you go do more of that that response, whatever the behavioral response is, um, only to find again having just a little bit of that kind of sense of feeling okay or feeling like you have cleared or you somehow figured it out and then boom again it hits and so now suddenly before you know it and maybe you're not even recognizing you're locked into the cycle um and and the more you keep responding to it the more in the ocd brain you know it's just getting this message that like yeah there's danger there's something here there's a threat so let let's let's the brain's going to keep producing more of that signal. And so the more you respond, the more it gives the signal. So you really get stuck in this really vicious, vicious cycle. Yeah. And, and really understanding that OCD really is a cycle, right? Yeah. Like the, one of the things that people that I tell people often is, and so people will often say, well, OCD is chronic, Matt, you know, I'm going to have it forever. I've read that on a blog, right. You know, and that's usually, you know, something to that effect. What people don't realize is that you need all these components for the OCD cycle to exist, right? And, 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 if, and if you, if to think that something is chronic, meaning lasts forever, well, then I would pose the question, okay, have you ever had a fear that you don't wrestle with anymore? You know, have you ever had something that you've obsessed about that you don't obsess about anymore? Okay. So if you got over that, you know, like most of us have in the past, how can you not, you could get over this too. And, and what you were obsessing about, how you feel about what you used to obsess about or used to worry about, mm-hmm. what you're worrying about now can become that, right? Yeah. And, and once, you, once you understand that that wheel is the problem, 
what you need to understand is that for in order for OCD to, to be alive, to, to run, it needs both obsessions and compulsions, That's right? right? And in the, the problem, like you were explaining, there's those four components of the wheel. You have the obsession, the anxiety, the compulsion or the behavior, and then the relief, right? And the problem is, is that when we do the behavior, whatever that is, we reinforce the idea that the obsession was actually dangerous and valid. So our brain keeps producing it. Exactly. Right. It's, it's the biggest, it's a, like in, in many ways, it is like this, like very crafty trap that we fall into because, and if we just think about this logically, right. So let me kind of explain it from a high level. So most people understand the idea of contamination OCD, right. We've seen it in movies. We understand like we've seen Leonardo DiCaprio on the aviator, right. And like, you know, he's, you know, germs, germs, germs. Right. Mm -hmm. So if let's say someone was afraid of a doorknob, right. And they touched a doorknob and then their brain had the intrusive intrusive thought. What if I get a disease because mm -hmm. someone before me had a disease, right. Mm -hmm. And then they feel anxious and then they wash their hands. Right. Those are, those are the, that's how quick the components happen, by the way. It's like, I touch, I had a thought, I get anxious. I wash my hands. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and that compulsion of washing your hands, what does that do? What does that teach your brain? well, that doorknob must've been dangerous. And so when I produce that thought, I actually must've kept myself safe. Mm -hmm. So the next time I touch a doorknob, what's my brain going to do? Mm -hmm. Same thought, right? And then it just builds from there. Now, now this same wheel is what happens with taboo thoughts. Mm -hmm. this, this is so many people operate from this belief and it's so disempowering. And I think it, it hurts so many people's recovery that somehow these taboo thoughts are a harder form of OCD to recover from. And oh my- yeah. Go, yeah. Go yeah. Uh, well, I was going to say, you know, honestly, it's an interesting concept you're bringing up because in, in, and I, I think it's important we take a minute to talk about this, right? Because part of what it brings up is a lot of shame and guilt, right? There's a lot of feelings that come with it. Sure. Right. But is it, is it really totally different, harder experience? Right. 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 Yeah. You're talking about like from someone that has contamination to someone that has this. Yeah, exactly. Because pe right. people sometimes will say like that's a common thing you hear, right? It's like, well, right. somehow this one's easier than that one, or or these are the hardest, or those are the. Right. And it's like, and we start to kind of almost like nitpick and and put this value system on these different things. Right, and and that his fear isn't as bad as my fear, right? Or that, or vice versa. And it's like what that does for you, though, that actually sets you in a hole for yourself to say. I have a harder thing to climb out of than everyone else. So it gives, it almost gives you subtle permission not to be successful, right? Mm -hmm. Because I would be successful if I had a different fear, but because I have this one, you know, it, it's, it's more challenging. So I'm almost subtly giving myself permission not to, not to push myself to a different level and really mm -hmm. see, because what people don't realize about OCD and anxiety is that overcoming a fear, it's not just that you overcome a fear, but in order to do that, you have to evolve yourself to a better version of yourself in order to do that. And it, in the recovery process, at least for me, can be a beautiful thing. I mean, I mean, empowering and, and you really get to see yourself from a, a different perspective moving forward. And in the strength that you get from overcoming a fear and especially breaking out of the OCD cycle, you get to take that strength and then go into regular life. And what I often see happen is that so many people have, have navigated regular life while dealing with OCD. And it's like, they've been carrying this huge boulder with them, yeah. still accomplishing all the regular stuff in day-to-day -day life. And when they get the opportunity to put that down, they can just like skyrocket, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. so, but, but really understanding how to do that comes from understanding this as a cycle problem and not a content problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And, and I think the main thing, you know, yeah, that I I've definitely heard in the, in the OCD community, um, you know, is, is exactly there's sometimes a separation. And I think the main thing that I also want to just keep hitting home is, you know, the, the content, whatever the content is, it, it's kind of useless because it doesn't like always, there, it's, it's like, I call it like the hot topic of the hour, like whatever right. the hot topic of the hour is that, that there we are. Right. right. And that, and that's can be moving targets. Like grab your popcorn and watch the show. Right. Right. But right. it's really about recognizing that, look, yes, some topics might bring you more, you know, you might say more shame than other topics. Right. We look okay. Yes. Like, like we're not going to deny that. But then again, though, the reality is if we step back further, whatever theme and topic you're dealing with though, 
you're going to, depending on how deep this goes, right. You're still going to have shame and, and feel bad right. about it. So it's like, you know, taboo definitely brings a little extra kind of, it can make it feel a little more crispy and crunchy and kind of sensitive and oh, Sure. Um, just because, you know, like, you know, these are topics like when we're talking about, you know, rape or, you know, right. incest, sinning, incest yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. like, oof, you know, the, there is a little bit of a weight to it, but the reality is it doesn't make it any more special or different than any other topics, right? OCD is OCD is OCD. And that's what we have to really recognize. Yeah. And you said it so well, it's like, and for those of you that didn't like catch that, I just want to like echo it for a second. It's like, please don't think your OCD is special. Like that is the exact thing it wants you to think. And that's the one thing it could use to actually keep you stuck. Because if you believe it's special, then you won't trust the process we're going to tell you guys about, you know, like you won't trust the guidance of, of someone trying to help you because mine's different, exactly. quote unquote, mine's different, Matt, you know, mine's different, Christina. Yep. And if you buy into that, why would you trust the process? Yours is different, right? Where, where if we really go into this idea that this is the same phenomenon that, you know, are like estimated 1% of the population, I would say it's probably higher than that if I'm really transparent, because usually when I'm doing talks and education about OCD, most people are like, you know, I think I have that. I have, I have those in thoughts. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like anytime I've talked about intrusive thoughts and I'm like, Hey, you know, I'll do a question for the audience. Hey, anyone have intrusive thoughts? Like every hand goes up, right? So either everyone is ill or it's a common phenomenon that we all experience exactly. and we don't, and we don't need to attach this negative stigma illness slash I'm like a distorted person. No, that that maybe, maybe it is just a normal thing that happens in the mind. What's abnormal is the story we, we engage in. And then ultimately all the things we do to try to get rid of it, because that is what creates the wheel. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, and, and that's why the biggest part of the focus, which we're going to cover really in part three of this and, and obviously much more in depth in the workshop, but in part three, what we're going to talk about is, is like the biggest part of this is getting rid of your behaviors, right? Yeah. Like, and, and, and actually that's why it's like, it, when someone starts telling me about their intrusive thoughts, the reason that I have such like a blank, like, you know, kind of a uh, ambiguous face when they're telling me, because I know that's not actually the problem we're dealing with. Yeah. They can tell me about their incest thoughts or their harm thoughts. And I'm just like, okay, so let's move into the behaviors. Cause that's really what we need to address. Yeah. I, I have to say, I love how you're framing this. Like I really, really do. I love how you're framing it and saying, yeah, this is not a content issue or even a thought issue. It's an OCD issue. It, it's mm -hmm. really the behavioral issue. So like just, you know, even that, that concept you're introducing here and you're even talking about, I mean, I, I think it's such an important element to recognize like, yeah, the, the, the thoughts, the, the things like, yeah, they pop in, but that's great. Like, okay, whatever. Let's look at what, what are you doing though? What are you doing? Right. Well, well, because, because again, however we see the problem is how we're going to try to solve it. If we see this as a thought problem, what are we going to try to solve the thoughts? thoughts right. And exactly. how are we going to do that? Well, we can't, right. Like, like, you know, the, the most common, and we'll talk about this, right. You know, thought suppression, right. Is a huge compulsion, right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's mm -hmm. so paradoxical because if we solve it as a thought problem, we're automatically going to do compulsions. That's going to keep the wheel going. Yeah. So understanding the real problem being an, an OCD loop problem, mm -hmm. What not only does it allow you to see the problem differently, but it puts you in the driver's seat to get better. Exactly right. You know? And, yeah. And well, you're really talking about like separating and understanding where do you actually have control, right? Like, right. like what can you actually control here, right? Like, right. you know, if you're having intrusions pop in, like, like you know, we kind of covered it in, in, the, in the first series is, I mean, it's like grasping, grasping at air. Like you can't, you can't yeah. grasp an intrusive. Right. It's like it's in here. It's like, ah, but, right. You can't do anything yeah. there. Yeah. How many times have you argued with your mind and won? You know? <laughs> like for me, yeah. I've, I've never, I've never won. Yeah. It's just like, for some reason it just keeps going. Right. <laughs> um, and, and so, you know, um, but, well, so let's, let's go ahead and talk. Let's, and, and, and on this episode, I really want to dive into some of the main compulsions people do that maybe they don't even realize they do, you know, cause we talked yeah. about washing, right? So most people with intrusive thoughts were like, I don't wash Matt. So what do I yeah. do? You know? Oh, yeah. So, so you want to, you want to dive into yeah, some, yeah, some totally, compulsions yeah. people do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I think it's a, it's a great point to actually kind of address this part because it, it's exactly right. I, I think for the most part, when it's something that you do outwardly that you can really actually see, um, you know, others might see it. So definitely people work really hard to try to 
kind of mask it and, and cover it. And we'll, we'll, we'll come up with a thousand and one excuses. Yeah. Um, but there's so much that we do internally that you don't even realize that that's right. actually still part of the same uh, process. And so, you know, like I often say to, to my people is, you know, you probably think you're thinking and not realizing you're actually not thinking you're yeah. actually mentally compulsing. So like right. analyzing, right? Like right. Th- there's a really a big difference between when we're analyzing something and when we're actually not just analyzing, but, but more are in this repetitive rut where we're just asking 50,000 questions upon questions upon questions and not really coming up with any solution. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and so like to separate that, right. So like, let's say that I, and cause this, all this stuff that we're about to cover today is where this is what kept me stuck for years of my life. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like this is, this is what, this is how OCD took years of my life away from me. Not, not only did I not know I had OCD, right. But I didn't understand this idea of mental behaviors. Like I had, yeah. I, it just, it, it, it completely evaded me. Yeah. Exactly. Not, not that, not that no one ever told me about it. They probably did, but it just, I just did not get it. And there's a difference between knowing something and understanding something, right. You know, oh, I mean? yes. like, like, like there, <laughs> you know, so, so, so let's, let's talk about, so, so what you're just, so I'm really trying to articulate it. Um, so, so we have the intrusive thoughts that we talked about and those themes that we talked about in the last episode. So let's say I, I have an intrusive, harmful thought, like what if I snap and hurt my mom, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's the thought. That's the thing that's out of my control that it just popped up and it scared me. Right. So when analyzing, when I go to try to solve that, you're, you're telling me that that is the behavior I'm doing to resolve that thought, right? Exactly. Exactly. And I think that's a big piece, right? Is we don't, we don't often term these things as a mental behavior. We're thinking, we're thinking. And, and the reality right. is we, I mean, that that's kind of the key. We have to kind of have a way to differentiate and understand there's a difference when you're actually gathering information or when you're actually engaging in really um, helpful, adaptive thinking, critical thinking process or actual mental analysis that yields a result. You draw some sort of a conclusion from it, you apply it and you move on with life. Right. Those are all completely different processes than when you're doing something that looks like that, sounds like that. But if you look again, you probably will recognize you're actually not having any outcomes from it. You're not coming up with any solutions. You're mm-hmm. not, there's no conclusion. You're not moving on. You just keep getting stuck and you keep thinking and rethinking it. And you keep thinking and rethinking it from 50,000 different angles. What if I miss something? But could I do this? But what if I do? Oh, I don't know. If she's get, like, she's coming or she's maybe now in my, in my space. And if I do snap, what if I do snap? Oh, okay. Let me make sure that I cross my arms so that I keep my hands near me or, right. or let me stay away right. from the kitchen. So I'm not near sharp objects or, Oh right. mom, that that's, a glass okay we'll drink your glass of water but step back there because what if it breaks or i grab it right so you start to think all this different stuff um and not realize that in in all of those scenarios and examples even that i just gave are you actually solving and resolving anything no right right. you're just coming up with more questions and scenarios right right. in, in your attempt to get to that final answer but you don't quite get there so now right. you're just stuck in this right and 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 like i said it's the same thing as washing if you wash right then what happens is is that you're reinforcing the idea that that doorknob might have been dangerous so your next time you have a doorknob it generates the same thoughts by re- analyzing and ruminating like that you're validating the idea that that's something that you actually should react to in a dangerous way exactly. and, and then ultimately perpetuates a cycle. So let's go ahead and dive into, and we'll kind of list through these quickly today, right? Because I, I, you know, this, we'll, we'll go much more in depth in this. Um, but, but this is really just kind of shining light on yeah. a lot of the things that people do that they don't realize are keeping the wheel going and keeping themselves stuck. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So, so we talked about analyzing and rumination, the idea of all the stuff we're doing in our head to try to solve it, even trying to figure it out, quote unquote, like trying to solve the problem. That is an act. That is a compulsive act. Like I'm trying mm-hmm. to solve my sexuality or mm-hmm. solve, uh, you know, whether or not I'm going to go to heaven or hell. If you're trying to solve something that doesn't actually I- exist right now, that that's a behavior, right? So, um, 
So tell me about mental reassurance and yeah. kind of, and, and yeah, like what, like so what is that a little bit? Well, so, I mean, again, any, a mental behavior is, is really an, an urge, right? So we have to recognize what a compulsion is, is an urge. You feel like the need, like I need to think about this or I need right. to do this right now. So mentally, right. like, like needing to tell myself I'm a good person. I would never do something bad like that. Or I would never, I would never, um, um, think, uh, or I would never actually act on those things, or I haven't done this before. So there's no way I would do it now. So you're constantly trying to give yourself, um, some sort of a, a way to know that you essentially are just a good person. You would never be potentially this bad person mm-hmm. who would be responsible for causing the, this bad harm. Right. right. Um, that also could go into mental checking or scanning. You could be yeah. mentally checking your prior beh- behaviors or mentally checking your internal state. Um, yeah, your, or your, your private parts and genitalia. Right? It's, like, it's like, Oh, I had an intrusive thought. Let me scan my body real quick to see if I was aroused. Right. Exactly. Which, exactly. Paradoxically, when you focus on a part of your body, you create a sensation there exactly. and then you're like, Oh my God, I was, you know, it's like, exactly. you know, in, in that, in that, that's the problem with that behavior right there. But so much of mental checking is a huge thing and checking your past. Did I ever say that? You know, like you were saying about the last episode, I think with the mm-hmm. gentleman who was, did I ever say something racist? Did I ever text exactly. that? You know, I, let me, let me go back and solve my entire past, you yes, know? Exactly. And, and um, exactly. so, exactly. and then, and then there's obvious things like distracting yourself and this is a broad category, but this is literally anything you can do to, get your, get your consciousness, get yourself out of your, out of your mind. So this could be things like smoking marijuana, drinking alcohol. I'm going to just binge watch Netflix. I'm going to just listen to a podcast as much as I can or certain music. So I can, I can purposely get out of there. Yeah. Or I'll be honest. I have a lot of young adults and teens where, you know, they're, they're gaming for hours, sure, sure. hours. And they think, well, I'm just gaming. I'm like, well, you are you just gaming though? Or right. You know, and that doesn't mean that OCD right. doesn't show up there either because OCD right. shows up everywhere. So, right. you know, but yeah, absolutely. Well, well, and, and there you go. Right. And that's why, you know, one of the things that I think both of us really align on and, and is just like, you have to take personal responsibility and really be honest with yourself, yeah. what you're really doing. Yeah. It's like, so when you're just like, man, I just like to smoke, you know, because it calms me down. Okay. Or does it get you out of your mind? Does it, does it actually give you that relief? And, and, and is that compulsive? Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, and, and if you aren't honest with yourself, that is going to prevent you from getting better, unfortunately, because it, you have to really be transparent with yourself of what you do that fuels this cycle. Yeah. Or, I mean, and that's a great example to lead into, for example, thought replacement, right? Like this is something you wouldn't even connect to and think is compulsive, but like you're having a bad thought, you don't like it, right? It, it's uncomfortable. And then you go, well, no, I don't want that thought. So I'm going to, I'm going to now start to hyper-focus and, and deliberately try to try to have this good thought or yeah. replace it with, you know, this can also be, um, something you can do separately from that is also start to maybe even pray, right? So you might be replacing Mm -hmm. a thought or you might even start to pray. So you can do any one of those behaviors because again, what is it really for? It's because you're trying to um, basically neutralize that anxiety and discomfort that you're having, right? You're trying to, you're hoping that by doing this, somehow you're going to prevent all this stuff. You're going to get rid of it. It'll somehow stop. It'll go away. Yeah. Um, Right. And, and, and even avoiding things that trigger thoughts, so mm-hmm. like, like you said, like with the gentleman who, who is dealing with pedophilia OCD, mm-hmm. if I avoid playgrounds, well, I avoid it because I don't want to get triggered and I don't want these thoughts. Right. And, and, and going into the idea of counting and repeating verses and repeating, repeating phrases in your mind. My point is, ladies and gentlemen, is that all these things are things we do inside. Okay. Exactly. And, and the real thing that we wanted to cover in this episode is shining light on the idea that you may not wash your hands. In fact, if you tr- struggle with taboo thoughts, there's probably a high likelihood that you don't. Exactly. That does not mean that it's not OCD. Exactly. It just means that you do different compulsions. And again, the goal is we're going to talk about in this next episode, the goal with dealing with taboo thoughts is not to get rid of thoughts. It's not to get rid of anxiety it's to get rid of all the behaviors you're doing. Exactly. Okay. And we're going to explain the philosophy of that in episode three or part three here. But the, the real thing that I wanted you guys to take away from this is really understanding this is a wheel problem. And what we need to do is understand everything we do that fuels the wheel behaviorally. And that most of those behaviors are done right in our minds. Exactly right. Exactly. And, right. and if you get that, the good news is, is that we can actually start to change them 
Okay. using the techniques that we're going to talk about in part three. So, um, so we'll tie up for today, um, you know, on this, so just really, you know, helping you guys understand that if you need to re-listen to it and go through some of those and really see what you do, that's a great part to start with. And then meet us over in part number three, uh, where we're going to talk about, Hey, how do we actually treat this? How do we actually overcome this? Um, yeah. And we're going to dive into the skills and tools that you need to do that. Also be sure to register for our live workshop on the 27th of October, mm -hmm. uh, there's a link right below in the notes and make sure to do that because again, we do expect that it's going to fill up. So make sure to claim your seat because, um, you know, we're really going to be going into this stuff even deeper and you're going to get that live component to be able to ask questions and really hear from us, um, in person. So thanks so much Absolutely. guys. And, uh, really appreciate it. And we'll see you guys over in part three. Thanks. Bye. Thank you so much for watching that video. And so if you're struggling with OCD and anxiety, I just wanted to let you know that we have a free training for you um, over at Restored Minds where you can start learning how to use our AAA response to really break out of that loop and ultimately take back control of your life. And all you need to do to get access is just click the little link below and you'll be taken to a page where you can register today. Thank you so much.